So we started off with a pumpkin variety, an old variety from uh, Kerala that Binu actually gave us um, from North Kerala. And basically because there was only one pumpkin, so one plant, there wasn't enough kind of genetic diversity to kind of keep that plant going. So what I did is I specifically bred in another pumpkin. And by the way, I'll just show you quickly two pictures of uh, what the, the two mother, the parent stock looked like. So we have the Kerala pumpkin. And then we have a newer one that was created 40 years ago by a university here in Kerala as well. Which probably also came from this variety here, originally the one from Bino. And you can see it here just starting off uh, well as well. Now what I did is, because then I, I took that one pumpkin, I took the seeds, and then I actually um, grew four plants, and I then crossed in that round pumpkin from the university. I did that on purpose because I wanted to see in the next year, which is this year now, I wanted to see some uh, crossing, but some of the plants to be um, true to type. So this one here is true to type, this is the cross which we call the F1 variety and you can see it's got ridges um, it's basically a mix between that one and the round one which is quite, it's very heavily ridged and so we have plenty of seeds to start a new variety just using these two pumpkins and so what I ended up with is then is a, a new variety, a new cross, this is called the F1 the first generation after the cross now F2 would be if we grew this out and started making an entirely new variety. So we could grow this out F2, F3, generation F4, year 4 or generation 4, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, like in Ireland you could only do it year 4, but here you could nearly get away with three generations in one year because of the seasons being so long. Now, what I did then is, what I'm going to do now, because I have now back crossed no, because I have now crossed that into this variety, and we have 35 plants here, 35 pumpkins, there are a certain amount of them, and I knew this was going to happen, I wanted this to happen, a certain amount of these pumpkins were going to end up showing the cross, whereas others will not show the cross. And I'm going to have to be very, very careful in the way I'm not allowing um, this generation to get cross-contaminated. So I'm doing a lot of uh, hand pollination, which is very, very important. And so what I'm going to do now next is, I'm going to take this one here, which is showing the cross, and I'm going to cross it back into this one. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to get, like this is the pure breeding one, I want to get some of this genes, the, of, the, of the university one, out of it by crossing it into this. So this is like, let's just, just for argument's sake, this is a simplification of the whole thing. We're going to have like 50-50, so University Old Kerala Pumpkin in this one. Now when we cross it into this, we're going to have 75% Old Kerala and 25%. Now when I grow it out the next generation, I can pretty much get rid of all the old, like the, the dominant traits of the University, but keep a lot of the recessive traits and still have enough diversity to re-kind of charge this old population and to actually bring it back up to a standard where you know it, it won't um, like become worse and worse as you're growing it out every every year because of course if you're growing out from just one pumpkin which we did because that's what we got from uh, Binu you'll end up with um, it kind of tickling like it just gets weaker and weaker and certain plants will have show that more than others like the open pollinators of course uh, like carrots within a year or two you will notice if you're only growing from one carrot plant like you need at least 15 25 is even better if you're growing from one carrot plant eventually it'll just fizzle out that's what i'm trying to say and your crop will just population will get worse and worse and worse and worse now so that's back crossing and trying to save this old variety because it's a good one uh, the next thing I could do is create a new variety. So just grow out this one year after year after year and select the traits that I'm interested in. Now, shape is not something that I'm interested in. I don't care about the shape. Um, what I do now, size, you know, some traits, the dominant traits of big size versus small size, that all depends on 
Do you want a lot of small ones? Do you want a, lot, a few uh, bigger ones? It, that depends. You can breed that into it. You could breed... The main thing I want to breed into any new variety is disease resistance and also taste. Those are the two things that I'm most interested in. I don't really care what it looks like. So that's the two things I'm going to do. I'm going to try and save this old variety and grow a new one. So that's basically just, it's a little update on the kind of pumpkin plant breeding uh, video that I originally did. And I just wanted to show you how it works with pumpkins. Now I have here, um, I'm going to of course grow out about 25 plants each time because I'm kind of like the custodian of the seed and I'm going to share those seeds with other people and you don't need that many. You, you can get away with like six or so uh, pumpkins, but 25 is better. So that's it. That concludes the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and hope to see you in the next one too.